So, who is Pooja basically? Uh, so, basically, I'm a big data engineer. I graduated in 2021. And soon after soon after that, uh, I started working as a data engineer. I have an experience of around 2.5 years as a data engineer. Cool. So, Pooja, jumping to our main talk. So, basically, who is this big data engineer is basically? So, just to imagine your role and responsibilities and just uh, give a brief talk on that. Over to you. Okay, so as you know, like data is everywhere. Uh-huh. If you are sitting at your home and using smartphones, your data is being collected. If you are traveling in a car, the IoT sensors collect your data. Okay. And if you go to a supermarket, your contact details are collected and whatever you buy is being recorded. So all of these data, if they are not processed and analyzed properly, it's of no use. Okay, I So um, for these Specialists are required and they are known as data specialists Mm -hmm. and the data has to be analyzed and processed for uh, for making the business decisions, for marketing strategies and for the products. So for all of these, data engineers are required. So the main role of the data engineers are to develop, maintain, Mm -hmm. test and evaluate the uh, big data infrastructure of of an organization which would be beneficial for its growth. So okay. this is the role of big data engineer. So it's like a bunch of data. You will analyze that and you will filter it out. And based on that, you will predict the outcome. If I'm not wrong. Right. Um, a flow is built, like basically a pipeline or something is built. So uh, data, raw data would be extracted. And That's whatever the transformations that are required for the analysis is built. And then after the analysis are made, then it is stored in central data warehouses. So, uh, looking into this hierarchy level, uh, Pujana, if you jump into IT sector, so there will be a hierarchy like associate, I mean, entry level, associate, senior. So, uh, just yes. try to take the same hierarchy and what will be the hierarchy for uh, software, I mean, uh, data engineer. So, what will be the hierarchy? Um, it would be pretty much the same, I can say. Uh, as soon as you join, you would be joined as a, uh, maybe if you do internship during your college days, you'll be treated as an intern yeah. or in some companies, they are known as imaginers. Mm-hmm. And then after that, they would uh, be promoted uh, if, to a full-time job. That's an associate. Okay. And then uh, you would get another promotion to an engineer, data engineer. Okay. And then um, in some companies, there would be another Step known as engineer two or data engineer two. Okay. And then you would be uh, uh, promoted to leads and higher ups. That's more. Uh, got it, Puja. So uh, looking into fresher prospect, you Puja. So let's take my example. Okay. So let's assume that I am a fresher and I need to join a big data domain. So what are the prerequisites to me? What are the knowledge? What are the certifications I need to do to join into a domain? So the roadmap for a fresher can be uh, divided into different levels. So the basic level would be knowing of any programming languages. So the programming languages that a data engineer uses would be Python, Scala, R or Java. But mostly Python is used. So knowing Python really well in and out and uh, the libraries used for the data analysis, the, the Pandas library, the NumPy library, and it would be better to know the visualization library such as Matplotlib or Seaborn. And um, it's good to do a project, data analysis project in Python. So uh, then you can step to the next level. Uh, to query the uh, data in the data system, a uh, query language is definitely necessary. So a SQL or NoSQL query language. Uh, to start with, you can start with basic MySQL and do an again end-to-end project, uh, MySQL project. And you'll get an idea of how the data works, the schema works, and uh, how to store the data, how to retrieve the data, okay. and all of these things. So these two are major prerequisites uh, which are required, the programming language and uh, query based language. Okay. So this is the first level uh, that a data engineer requires. And if you're joining as a fresher, these two are must and rest of all the things would be trained in your organization. Right. So starting with the next level, it's good to know about the 
Hadoop ecosystem, hmm. the architecture of Hadoop, and uh, all of the working, how the files are stored. So uh, you can basically start with Apache Hadoop and uh, the commands. So here you can know about the HDFS Hadoop distributed file system, how the distributed system works, and uh, the MapReduce algorithm and techniques. Okay. So uh, there's a free software, open source software called Cloudera, which okay. gives you a free image to practice all this. So on that, you can also practice Hive queries mm-hmm. and scoop for transferring the data between different platforms. So here you will get an idea of how the data works, how you can store it, how the partitioning happens. Okay. And next you can start learning with uh, Apache Spark. For that, um, if you know Python really well, learning PySpark is not a big deal. Okay. So you can start learning PySpark and um, uh, the Apache Spark architecture and start working on it. And uh, just knowing the syntax is not enough, but knowing of how the background works, how the clusters are used. In technical terms, we uh, term the computing as a job. So how the job is being evaluated. Okay. So uh, how the partitioning and all, uh, how the uh, storage is used. So you can use this to better the performance in the next commands you use. Okay. So the so- basic things required. And along with this, you can also learn some streaming technologies like Apache Kafka. So this is the next level of prerequisites that is required for a data engineer. And coming to the third level, you can uh, familiarize yourself with the ETL tools. Mm -hmm. Um, You can start with any of the ETL tools that you uh, are interested in. Like there are many in the market, like Informatica is there. And talent is there, and we have uh, Snowflake. Snowflake, yeah. and um, in um, Microsoft Azure, ADF is there. Mm-hmm. And whichever you want, you can start with it and know the basic of how the ETL works, the extraction, transformation, of, and the loading. They, all these tools are most of them don't require coding. It's just um, the graphical user interface. So you can see some of the online materials and how all these things work. So that would be better. So this is the next level of prerequisite that's required. Are required. And uh, the next you can familiarize yourself with the cloud technologies. So whichever you're interested in, you can uh, start with either AWS or Microsoft Azure, or there is also GCP out. Okay. And coming to the last level, it's also good to know about the visualization tools such as Power BI, Tableau, and much more. So okay. here it could be used to draw insights from whatever the data that has been analyzed and stored. Okay. Uh, so you can also create interactive dashboards to um, show it to the clients or customers, or you can also analyze the data using these dashboards. So these are the levels of prerequisites that are required to become a data engineer. Cool then. So it was a brief uh, proper explanation, keeping freshers as well as uh, experience uh, in the talk. So yeah, guys, uh, the inputs given by Pooja in- applies for all the freshers as well as the persons who are planning to shift the domain from non-IT to IT. And the third part, what she was mentioning, it also applied to experienced candidates. So just try to take her inputs and just try to work on that. And uh, coming to uh, learning part, guys, you know, instead of going with technical first, try to understand the working theoretical of a uh, knowledge. Okay, so if we have a theoretical understanding, then it will be easy to understand the technical part. So that is one part uh, from my end. And uh, yeah, Pooja, putting spotlight on the market uh, demand for the big data engineer. So what is your view on that? So the demand is increasing day by day. If you uh, consider in 1990s or something, there were other technologies used. So uh, so the demand is increasing day by day. Uh, this is the still in the starting part of discovery of all the technologies that are used in big data. Sooner uh, they would be improved and um, still the discovery is going on. So more and more people are required and the demand for data engineers are required and considering the uh, security of the data in the organization, uh, 
there are many other technologies that AI can replace, but this should be done by human beings only. So uh, data engineers are required for this, for dealing with this big data. Uh, the technologies for these handling of this big data has started very recently. So right now we have not much more than 15 or 20 years of data. So I think that's also not that pretty much. So uh, going on, there would be more data, more historical data and new technologies would be evolving. So to uh, handle all these data and mm -hmm. to work with all these new technologies, we need more big data engineers. So the demand is going to be high in the upcoming years. Since users are increasing and data production will also be increased, so handle, to handle those data, you guys come into existence. All right. That's right. So looking into its uh, salary and uh, demand, to the fresher prospect. So, what is the expected uh, salary for a fresher? Uh, just mention the range in the current market. Yeah. In the current market, coming to fresher, mm -hmm. uh, basically it depends on the companies. Yep. So, if you get into some fan companies or any really good companies, they can offer you more. But an average salary, I could say, would be around six to nine lakhs for a fresher. All right then. So. Anything you want to add on uh, Puja? I guess from my end, I have asked all the questions. So from your end, if you want to add any points or any tips to our audience, go. So to become a data engineer along with the technical skills, soft skills are also really important. All of the data that you have analyzed, if you are not able to communicate properly with the ones who are who you are reporting to, it, it would be of totally a waste. Perfect. So uh, you should know to Communicate the analysis you have done. That's one thing I want to say. And one more thing is, instead of having just the theoretical knowledge, the working on hands-on projects on, on these technologies, knowing how to deal with the data, knowing how the data flows through different parts and components of the... Uh, Back-end working of uh, tech. <laughs> okay. So just not knowing theoretically how the system works mm -hmm. so what is happening in the data system how the data is being flowed what is causing the issue with the performance of the data if you know all of these things with the hands-on working that would be more beneficial and not just this you should also have the passion for what you're working for instead of just doing it like a job in your work um, they, this is actually an interactive job you'll have data from various sources uh, from various people or you will be working in different domains such as healthcare or finance or banking or IT industry and much more. So you'll have real-time data. So uh, it would be good if you could analyze these data and give on-spot decisions okay. and uh, not take it like a, a exam or delay making decisions or uh, going with some suggestions. So a lot of that, would be that is what you yeah, right. That's what we need. So I guess these are the suggestions. So yeah, guys, the only overview is like if you got a real-time data, so you should have a capability of analyzing the data and you should have a capability of saying on this spot. And instead of delaying a lot of time because you are dealing with the real-world business thing, so you should have a tendency of delivering the data quicker as as possible. So yeah, I guess... All the questions has been covered and from my end, everything has been answered. And from your end, I guess everything has been mentioned, right? I guess we are covering in the anything. All right. Are we missing anything? All right. Uh, no, not much. All right. So what my opinion is like, big data is kind of a mutual to all the upcoming technologies. So in the market for every six months or every three months quarterly, a new technology comes but to handle that technology's data you guys plays a very important role so hello then uh, we have covered everything and yeah puja i really appreciate you for taking time and you know joining us giving complete insight about what is this who is this big data engineer is all about uh, thanks a lot for joining us today thank you akshay for giving me this opportunity to uh, let people know about how what a big data engineer does and what's the uh, a path to become a big data engineer. Pleasure, my pleasure. 
and yeah guys this is all about today's talk and uh, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel hit the bell icon and subscribe and in the description i will be providing uh, pozar's uh, uh, linkedin profile you can just connect with her and you can just ask whatever queries you have and uh, we also have a telegram community group the link is given in the description and yeah pooja thank you once again for joining us today thank you akshay and yeah guys, this is all about uh, the third episode art of professionalism in the next video i will come up with another uh, video Until then that take care see you